Hello everyone, I'm Robin, and today let's talk about this beautiful bucket of dunder that I have next to me. Now, if you are a rum fan, you've probably heard the term dunder or muck thrown around when referencing funky Jamaican rums, but let's take a step back for a second. I'm gonna assume you are not a rum fan. Rum is a distilled spirit made from sugarcane, sugarcane byproducts. So often it's sugarcane juice that's fermented or molasses that's fermented and then it's distilled and what comes out is rum. Sometimes it's matured, sometimes it's left completely unaged as silver rum, and sometimes, most often, it's flavored. And this is where the common misconception that rum is really sweet comes from, is because there is some rum that has artificial sweeteners and flavors added in. So if you're looking to get into rum from the whiskey world, um, steer clear of spiced rum. That's probably not what you wanna go for first. Yeah, I like to point out that rum isn't inherently any sweeter than whiskey, brandy, any other distilled spirit. It's when there are additives uh, in the rum before bottling that makes it really sweet. Anyways, now Jamaican rums are typically known for being super funky, right? You'll hear the terms high ester, high hogo thrown around when it comes to Jamaican rums. And this just means it has a lot of fun, funky, tropical, over ripened fruit notes, usually. And these funky flavors can be a result of a number of different things during the rum making process, such as long fermentations and pot distillation, etc. But one way of developing these funky flavors is using dunder or muck. And these terms are usually used interchangeably, however, they are different. Dunder is essentially the stillage that is left in the still after distillation. That's what I have here. And this is called sour mash or back set in the bourbon industry. So this is not just a rum thing. However, muck is a little bit more complicated. Muck is a combination of the semi-solids that are left at the bottom of the fermentation tank. I would refer to this as lees. Um, also the semi-solids that are left at the bottom of the stillage in the still, as well as the residue that's left in the retort if uh, the rum distillery is using a retort or a double retort pot still and cane trash. All of these things get mixed together and that is what the muck is made out of. You've probably heard stories, I have definitely told stories about goat's heads and dead bats and things in these muck pits, but I cannot confirm nor deny whether goat's heads are actually tossed into muck pits or whether bats actually get knocked out by the putrid smell of the muck pits and fall into them and yeah, add to the mixture. Um, you'll just have to go to Jamaica and find out yourself, I guess. <laughs> Some distilleries still use muck and dunder in their recipes in Jamaica. Um, Hamden Estates is one of them that is known for still using this practice. And this dates back to hundreds of years ago. There is actually a document that dates back to the early 1900s that's called Report on the Experimental Work Jamaica Sugar Experiment Station that outlines a recipe that actually goes into making these funky Jamaican rums. Um, and Hamden Estates has kind of loosely confirmed that they follow a similar recipe. So the recipe calls for 40% dunder or stillage, 
30% of skimmings. Now this is a byproduct of sugar production. So it's the residue that kind of forms on the top as you are boiling the sugar cane to make sugar and molasses is also a byproduct. But yeah, this is the skimmings from the top of that process. 10% is vinegar or cane vinegar, mostly acetic acid. 10% is muck. And the final 10% is molasses. <laughs> so why add muck and dunder? Yeah, that's the real question that we're here for, right? And that goes into the funkiness. It adds to the funkiness. Um, muck in this document from 1906 is actually referred to as flavor. When you add muck to a fermentation, what you're doing is purposefully infecting your fermentation with other microbes, mostly bacteria. This is a brewer's worst nightmare. <laughs> Brewers are very careful about sanitation because they don't want any wild microbes getting into the beer that they're brewing because this can cause really undesirable off flavors to form. So usually when brewers are, you know, creating a sour beer or something like that, they are adding in a bacteria strain or yeast strain that they know exactly what it is. So it usually comes from a yeast supplier rather than the wild yeast in the air. So what's in the muck is just a ton of microbes that are producing these long chain fatty acids. These smell not so great. However, during the fermentation process and the distillation process, these carboxylic acids, these long chain fatty acids, are able to transform into esters where they combine with alcohol molecules on acid catalysts and yeah, out comes esters, which are really fruity and delicious, much better than the carboxylic acids that they started as. One wonderful example that I love to give is butyric acid. I feel like this is the most common, um, the most common carboxylic acid reference because it makes such a transformation as far as aroma goes when it is esterified with ethanol. So butyric acid is what's responsible for essentially vomit smell. It's really gross, not, not great right? You don't want your rum to smell or taste like vomit. However, when it esterifies with ethanol and becomes ethyl butyrate, the smell and taste is pineapples, much better than vomit. So that's just one example. And this is just a cacophony of carboxylic acids that's in the muck that is then able to esterify into these fruitier, delicious flavors. And there you have your funky high ester, high hogo Jamaican rums. In bourbon, when they're adding their back set or their sour mash into the fermentation, they do it for a couple of reasons. Um, they say one, it's to keep consistency between batches, um, but also it's to acidify the fermentation a little bit. So that back set has some acids, it's a little bit more acidic, and this creates a more optimal pH for the yeast during fermentation. So what I have next to me is not actually muck, this I'm calling dunder. This is the stillage from the two low wines distillations that I did for the Queen Palm Molasses Rum Brandy mashup that I did. You can watch that video. However, I did save the lees from the fermentation. So the semi-solids at the bottom of the fermenter didn't make it into the still. There's the potential of some off flavors coming through the distillate if you allow the lees to go in the still. So I saved the lees and then after distillation, mixed the stillage from the low wines distillation back into the bucket along with the lees that were left over. So it's not just stillage, but it's mostly stillage. 
Anyways, yeah, that's why I'm calling it Dunder. Now, notoriously, muck pits also smell horrendous, but my bucket doesn't smell horrible. I think my Dunder bucket smells quite lovely. Whenever I open the lid of the bucket, Jerry immediately smells olives. I think that's strange because I'm not getting olives, but maybe from a distance he's getting some brininess. I'm not sure. Um, but when I open this up, it smells like fruits that have been soaking in balsamic vinegar. Yeah, it's a little bit of dried fruits, some raisins and dates and figs, but also a little bit of like fresh berries in there as well. So lots of fruitiness and a little bit of some vinegar notes. But yeah, I think it smells delightful. You're probably wondering, so Robin, what are you gonna do with your dunder pit? I actually have a fermentation going right now where I used some of the dunder in the fermentation. Um, so yeah, hopefully it makes some funky, funky rums. That's the plan. Now I'm adding my dunder bucket into my rum fermentations for a number of reasons. One, there are clearly microbes in here and I want the potential of increased funkiness in my rum. So I'm adding the dunder in to hopefully create some fun, funky flavors. I will note that some home brewers and home distillers will sometimes add in yogurt into their rum fermentations to add in some lactobacillus um, to help with building up that funkiness. Uh, lactobacillus is said to give it more of like these creamy notes and things like that. The second reason is, again, this is slightly acidic and I meant to take the pH, so I'm gonna take the pH in a second. Let's take the pH. So this looks like it's sitting at a pH at about 3.9 or 4.0. And that acidity helps with the optimization of the yeast. Reason number three is that there are some nutrients in here that are really beneficial to the yeast. Not only did I add nutrients to the batches that ended up making it into this dunder, um, but also some of the lees act as nutrients for the yeast that are in this fermentation. This way, I hopefully don't have to supplement with any nutrients. And reason number four <laughs> is that I feel really wasteful when I throw away all of the stillage. So if I can recycle it, I will recycle it. Yeah, trying to minimize my waste. There is a super cool pellicle layer growing on top. And I've seen this before on some of my fermentations, but previously I didn't have a microscope. And now I have a microscope and just really wanna know what is forming that pellicle layer on top. So yeah, let's take a look under the microscope.
I would like to note that when I looked at the dunder bucket under the microscope, I looked at both the pellicle layer and the juice that was inside. Now the pellicle layer just had tons and tons of clusters of yeast, whereas the juice inside had a mixture of both bacteria and yeast kind of free flowing. From a macro perspective, I think this makes sense. So when I looked under the microscope, I was seeing both bacteria and yeast in there. I have no idea what kind of bacteria it is. I also have no idea what kind of yeast it is, but I can, yeah, make a guess, I guess. <laughs> Some of the microbes look pretty similar to what I was seeing when I looked at the wild fermenting strawberries under the microscope. You can check out that video here. Um, and to my best guess, it's probably a combination of some Saccharomyces species because that's what I used for the fermentation was Saccharomyces cerevisiae, as well as some Brettanomyces. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with friends, uh, subscribe to get more videos like this. And if you have any idea, if you are a microbiologist or anything like that, if you have any idea what microbes I'm looking at, please, please let me know in the comments below. And of course, before I go, I have to give a shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for also being the start of what I hope to be a neat community on Patreon. I should take a look at the juice that's inside, shouldn't I? Uh, bo -bo 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 Hey, you're an ant. What are you doing? Some Brettanomyces. Brettanomyces. Some Bre Brettanomyces. <laughs> Brettanomyces. It's okay. You're okay, Robin. It's not going to be over here, is it? It's going to be here.